if we listen carefully, we realize that entire landscapes can be crossed without hearing any birdsong or the buzzing of insects. Nature has become troublingly silent. Why? For thousands of years, we have lived alongside nature in deep respect. Farming activity even contributed to the local biodiversity. But once intensive agriculture with its fearsome pesticides took over, plants and animals began to die off. And their disappearance is now accelerating at a dramatic rate. Today, 40% of insect species are at risk and 15% of bird species native to Europe have already disappeared. This extermination is a cause for concern way beyond naturalist circles. In 2019, the popular Save the Bees initiative in Bavaria, home to some 13 million people, forced the local government to take radical steps to promote biodiversity. The example of Bavaria demonstrates that we as citizens can act on behalf of nature. We can do something. There are other interesting examples. An unusual experiment is underway in the south of England. Rather than protect what already exists, two scientists are attempting to reverse the process. It seems utopian, but the results speak for themselves. The large blue butterfly became extinct People were absolutely horrified that you could no longer see it in this country anywhere. And nobody could really understand why. I lived with the last colony for six years, measuring almost everything. And alas, it was just too late to save it. Jeremy Thomas and David Simcox are two entomologists who have become famous for having successfully reintroduced a rare species of butterfly, the large blue, but not without a struggle. Discovering the requirements of the large blue was really like a detective story. It starts its life fairly normally. It lives in summer for a few weeks and it lays its eggs on the flowers of wild thyme or origanum. Uh, this is wild thyme just down here. And for a few weeks, the caterpillar eats the flowers and the seeds of the thyme, but then it changes its lifestyle dramatically. It drops off the plant and it produces some secretions and it starts to mimic an ant. After years of real detective work, the tireless Jeremy Thomas discovered that this butterfly depends on a very specific species of ant. Without it, it cannot reproduce. And the species of ant itself needs a very specific natural environment. This ant is a very much a heat-loving ant and ground temperature is actually determined by the height of the, of the grass. So the taller the grass grows, the cooler the ground gets. And once that happens, Myrmica sabuleti is replaced by other species of red ant, and this is why the butterfly became extinct. As a result of intensive farming, cows disappeared from the meadows, upsetting the prevailing natural balance. The grass grew, the ants were driven out, and the large blue disappeared. It went extinct in 1979. But almost immediately, we took the decision that we would try to reintroduce it because we thought we understood what it needed in this country at last. The first step was to restore the grassland to its former state. So Jeremy and David convinced livestock farmers to allow their cows to graze there again. Only the correct interaction between humans, ruminants and grasslands could restore the butterfly's habitat. Once that had been done and once sites had recovered, we set about finding a suitable source of large blues to see if we really had recreated the habitat and to release them in Britain. I was very lucky as a 23-year-old 
to get in my camper van and drive across Northern Europe trying to find suitable donor populations. And it was really, really sad as I went to discover that sites that had had, had large blues on them only in a, a few years beforehand had none left at all. And I was really fortunate to end up on an island off the east coast of Sweden called Oland, where I actually found uh, large blues. I had one of those moments that you only have once or twice in your life uh, of arriving there uh, late in the evening, and the first thing that happened was a large blue landed at my feet. And it still gives shivers up my spine <laughs> thinking about it now. Oh, I've just missed some up here. I was able to find eggs, and we were able to bring eggs back to do our first trial introduction. That was really very, very groundbreaking. This meticulous and pioneering work took decades, but in the end, they achieved the impossible. The large blue is back. Historically, the large blue used to occur in about six different regions in the UK, and we've now got it established in two of those. We could also show that maintaining these sites in a suitable condition for the large blue benefited many other species. We didn't have to sit uh, and objectively watch these things declining. We could actually do something about it. It's an iconic species, and, and if we can really save species like this, then we can, then we can do anything. The English entomologists' adventures demonstrate that human intervention can be effective, but the complexity of the process is also laid bare. Basically, action is required before a species disappears. This is why, over the last few decades, Europe has been giving sanctuary status to certain areas in order to preserve their biodiversity. Europe is actually very rich in nature reserves. Nature 2000 and the Emerald Network form the largest coordinated network of protected areas in the world. The objective is to protect, on a cross-national basis, the most endangered plant and animal species in Europe. Today, this network represents 18% of our land territory and 8% of maritime territory. This is one of our most precious nature reserves, the Vaden Sea. In this coastal landscape, located between the Netherlands, Germany and Denmark, human activity is reduced to a strict minimum. This zone has always been a haven and an important resting area for migratory birds. So zijn eigenlijk de schakel die de Waddenzee met de hele wereld verbindt. En zo is dat gegaan door duizenden jaren van evolutie. De Waddenzee is dus een enorm belangrijke schakel eigenlijk in het wereldwijde ecosysteem waar die vogels in leven. Every year in the spring, after wintering in Africa, the birds fly off to nest in the north. A 10,000 kilometer flight with the Vaden Sea marking the halfway point. Here, up to 15 million migrating birds can rest before continuing on their way to Siberia. It's also a stopover point on their return journey in the fall. Given the importance of the Vaden Sea for birds, the area is studied closely by scientists, among them ornithologist Evie Gobbins. What I vooral belangrijk vind is that we de natuur behouden dat er allereerste. Dus dat is denk ik vooral mijn drijfveer waarom ik dit werk ben gaan doen. Kleine veranderingen kunnen we echt wel gelijk al merken. Dus op het moment dat we een wet in, indienen die een bepaald gebied beschermt, dan zie je al gelijk dat er veel meer soorten zijn. En dat soort dingen zijn denk ik heel mooi in ons vak, dat wij met ons onderzoek daarvoor kunnen zorgen eigenlijk. Proberen te vinden of er hier een aantal individuen tussen zitten die we dus al eerder hebben geringd. En zo wordt al die data eigenlijk bijgehouden zodat we weten waar ze zijn. En daar kunnen we dan weer allerlei andere analyses mee doen. 
en onderzoekjes. Dus we gaan even kijken of we kunnen vinden wat ze nou hebben gegeven. Hier zitten nog meer bondjes. Ja, ik zag het net. Oh ja, inderdaad. Heel dichtbij. De Waddenzee is een intergetijde gebied. Dus wat daar gebeurt is, je hebt verschillende uh, wadplaten. En die komen dus onder water te staan als het vloed is. En die komen weer droog te liggen als het eb is. En zo gaat dat constant door. En die vogels die volgen dus eigenlijk die vloedlijn. Dus zodra er een stukje wadplaat beschikbaar is voor die vogels, gaan ze daarheen om voedsel te zoeken. Want daar zitten dan de beste en de, de verste diertjes eigenlijk die ze kunnen vinden. The Vaden Sea is almost completely protected. But it is not immune to the effects of global warming on sea levels. Since the beginning of the 20th century, its level has increased by 2 mm per year, far from a negligible figure. De Waddenzee is een dynamiek systeem die enorm veerkrachtig is. Dus dat systeem kan zich enorm goed aanpassen. Want die tijden, hoe lang ze dus onder water staan, kunnen ook verschillen per dag. De temperatuurschommelingen in die kleine systemen kunnen enorm zijn. En al die diertjes die daarin zitten, die kunnen zich ook goed aanpassen daaraan. Dus in dat opzicht is de Waddenzee enorm veerkrachtig. Protecting nature is about preserving its capacity to resist. This applies as much to the coastline as to other lesser-known biotopes.